Okay. So I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so I'm just going to stop my share right now. And I just want to say, um, want to say hi to everybody. We're going to get started now. Um, welcome to our OUSD webinar on BrainPop. So we talked a lot of, uh, this week about the theme of our webinars being getting set up and getting started with distance learning. So a lot of you are just taking this week to explore, get ready, learn about resources. And so I want to schedule BrainPop this week because if you're looking for a resource that makes it easy to get started, it checks off a lot of boxes. It's fun, it's engaging, it works well on different types of devices, and it integrates really well with Clever. So um, I just wanted to add, so on a personal note, I discovered Brain Pop when I was a first year teacher and I was not a very good teacher, which can be expected during your first year of teaching. And I had a really challenging class, but I found Brain Pop that year and my kids loved it. And it was one of the few things that made everybody calm, including me, and everybody was completely engaged in, in learning. And right now I've got four kids at home and I'm not sure what my teenagers are doing during the day, but my four year old loves Brain Pop and Brain Pop's the only ac academic activity that he actually asked to do. So we'll, we'll sit for like half an hour and, and look at Brain Pop videos and he even likes doing the quizzes. So I think that Brain Pop's a really great fit for distance learning right now. It's a great resource to start with. And I want to highlight also, the fact that uh, we've been working with Brain Pop this year, um, Yvette from, from Brain Pop uh, graciously offered a, uh, a pilot to 10 of our OUSD schools. And so there were 10 schools that started the pilot earlier in the year and been using it. So we really appreciate that. But just that um, Brain Pop has offered uh, the resources and has also offered resources to all OUSD schools during the closure. So we're really appreciative of that. And um, and I just want to, to say thank you for that. So I want to introduce um, our panelists. You, you probably know me, I'm Kellett Chin, and I'm not actually going to be doing much today. I'm just, just introducing, I'm the coordinator of instructional technology, former OUSD teacher. And we may have another um, panelist who's, who's um, leading things a little bit later on, Robert Miller, but for right now we have Yvette from, uh, from BrainPop. So I just want to, introduce Yvette and Yvette, I'll pass it over to you. That sounds good. Uh, thank you for being here today. I know these are ambiguous times for a lot of us. We've all been kind of thrust into distance learning, whether we were ready for it or not. Uh, my background is I'm, I live in Bend, Oregon. I'm from California. I uh, grew up in San Diego and I started teaching in Santa Ana School District in the 90s. And from Santa Ana School District, I got my uh, admin credential and I went forward and ended up working as a school administrator for a while. And, um, and then about 10 years ago, I started working on the private side for an English language arts company. And in the last couple years for Brain Pop, which has just been a, an amazing um, experience. Brain Pop's an, an excellent company. Many of you know it, it's been around for 20 years. Uh, Brain Pop was ed tech really before that term existed. And I'm going to show you the story of Brain Pop, which was recently put together. Um, our founder is still our founder. It's a family owned company. And he actually is a pediatric immunologist, interestingly enough, especially during these times. Um, so his background is medical pediatrics. And Brain Pop was constructed because he felt like young patients didn't understand always the complexity or the science of their illnesses. And so we're quite robust in STEM because that's where Brain Pop originated. Um, Kellith, am I, can you see my screen? Yes, I can, uh, I can, well, I can see you. I don't see your screen right now. Okay, so let's, figure out how I can start sharing my screen. Share screen down at the bottom. At the, there's a green button. Yeah. Let's see. Share. Yep. Okay. Host disabled attendee screen sharing. Let me work on that. I can do that okay. real quickly. I just want to mention while we're getting that um, set up, um, if you have questions that you're thinking of, 
uh, use the Q&A feature down at the bottom and we will get to your questions. How's so that? one thing I, uh, it looks like I have it now. Okay. One thing I wanted to um, let you know is that if you've used Brain Pop in the past, you probably really know the movies and the quiz because Brain Pop's uh, really known for their movies, taking something complex and distilling it into a very comprehensible um, video and done with characters that students get very affectionate and very attached to. So um, many people know Brain Pop and think videos and quizzes. What I'm gonna focus on today is really showing you the creativity tools. In the last few years, Brain Pop has added more resources and not everyone realizes that those tools are available, but they're critically important, especially now in distance learning, because with your dashboard, you'll actually be able to assign topics and you'll be able to assign these creativity tools and kids then can um, innovate projects showing you what they understand about the topic under study and they'll be able to submit those directly to you through the dashboard. So if you can see my screen, let's start with the uh, story of Brain Pop. So set the stage for us. How did it all begin? Well, I guess it depends on where you start. The way I heard the story, it all began in the doctor's office. Dr. Kadar had a young asthma patient. Dr. Kadar? Well, he's a doctor, allergist and immunologist specifically. And of course, the founder of Brain Pop. But to get the full story, you have to go a little further back. Avraham Kadar was born in Rishon Lezion, Israel in 1950. As a child, he had polio, a virus that can permanently paralyze some muscles. This was before there was a vaccine. A series of treatments kept him hospitalized for months at a time. So he read a lot and observed the world, like the ants crawling along his windowsill. That sparked his passion for science, which would become his life's work. He studied math, physics, and ultimately medicine. Diagnosing patients was like detective work gathering clues in search of an answer. Medical research was like that too. That love of scientific investigation brought Dr. K to the National Institutes of Health in the 1980s. He worked on a crucial study in the early years of the AIDS epidemic. Close to 300 brave people volunteered for experimental treatments. They knew they were dying and hoped their sacrifice would save the lives of others. The memory of the generous hearts and brilliant minds lost to the epidemic stayed with Dr. K. I think it drove him to look for a way to work with young people, to help them grow into their talent and share it with the world. Inspiration struck about 10 years later when he was working with a young asthma patient. This kid couldn't breathe and didn't know what was happening. She was really scared. Dr. K knew. If his patient could understand what was happening, it would be a little less scary. The way I heard it, he had an idea, a sudden understanding that he would later call a brain pop. I definitely heard he got the idea from explaining stuff to his kids. I'm pretty sure it was a collaborative process. The idea? Short videos that made complicated stuff simple and clear. Talking to kids without talking down to them and cartoons with jokes. <laughs> Dr. K knew the science, and an artist named Mike Watanabe joined the team to create the cartoons. They didn't have the budget for a professional voice actor, so Mike did Tim's voice. But Mike could only do one voice, and he wasn't funny. Hey, that's not, wait, wait what? But you know what they say. Necessity is the mother of Moby. No one says that. Bleep, bloop, 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 bleep, bloop. Back in the early days of the internet, it took forever for movies to load. To give kids something to do while they waited, the team wrote a short quiz. And there you have it, the Brain Pop Basics on the World Wide Web. Yeah, we've come a long way since those early internet days. Tim got some much needed help, as you can see. And so did the original team. Brain Pop now reaches millions of students around the world each year. 
we realized that it's not enough to just explain stuff. So we built tools for kids to express their own ideas. We've started tackling all kinds of mysteries, not just what happens during an asthma attack, but what's happening in the world outside the classroom, in our homes and families, even in our own hearts and minds. And we've never forgotten that scared little kid in the doctor's office, or the one stuck at home, fascinated by the ants on his windowsill. Thanks. I finally nailed the right intention for that line, and, and you just step all over my... Is that my lunch? Okay. So this was finalized in December. And it's interesting because uh, Dr. Kadar has a, a very um, deep sensitivity to children who um, are unable to go to school because he himself had polio as a child and is now disabled from it and was forced to not be in school for months. So our platform has actually been open for uh, about two months globally. And as you can imagine, um, we had um, many Asian countries that were um, initially utilizing Brain Pop and then Europe and then uh, kind of starting in Washington State now across the United States. Uh, many schools right now are accessing Brain Pop because of the um, distance learning. So I think what we'll focus on is showing you some of these new tools that are in Brain Pop. Um, I do want you to know that there is a coronavirus video that we launched about two months ago. So that is a great place to start. If you haven't seen it, I will try to set some time aside today when we're perusing the uh, platform to show you that. There's also one on hand washing and it, there will always be related topics that are suggested. So as you're exploring, uh, you'll be able to see anything that might be related to the lesson that you're teaching your students. And the other thing that uh, I will do is I will try and find a pause point where I can have you go in and do a little bit of exploration rather than just listening to me the whole time. I think it's, it's the advantage to that is it's great for you to actually watch me do it and then do it yourself. Um, the disadvantage in this format is that sometimes it's hard to corral a big group back in. So um, I'll give you some time, but then please make sure that you stop doing what you're doing and you come back because it will be hard to pull you away, just like it is with students when they're in Brain Pop. They don't wanna stop working on their projects. So between Brain Pop and Brain Pop Junior, we have roughly 1,500 topics across pretty much most uh, content areas. This is Junior, and then this is Brain Pop. So if you have students that are maybe um, straddling both the platforms, they're not going to have any problems because they look similar, they're designed um, in a way that they should feel familiar to any students moving between. Brain Pop Junior is for K3 students and Brain Pop overlaps from grades three and up, but we have many lower grade students who are interested in a topic and they go into Brain Pop and so I'm usually not limiting that and if you are a teacher that um, is in those grades where the overlap exists don't worry too much if your students are interested in um, going up to brain pop or down to junior the nice thing about this platform is kids can follow their own curiosity and we do see outside of assignments kids do lots of uh, gaming and playing on brain pop because it is fun and it's engaging when you're logged in, you're gonna see a Moby head on the left. When you click on that Moby head, it's gonna show you everything you have access to. So you can just use this to navigate across the platforms. You will also have access to BrainPop um, ELL, which is a more structured program that is sequentially um, moved through for students. There's a placement test at the very beginning that will put students in the level that they should be in. Um, many of you will just be working in Brain Pop and Brain Pop Junior. As you have questions or you're wondering how to prepare for a lesson, go down here to Brain Pop Educators. I'll try to spend a few minutes at the end. Super well organized. Um, you can find almost anything. You can find a two minute tutorial. If you forget everything I say here today, 
you can jump into the educators page and find a one to three minute um, refresher that will help you get going. Okay, so right now I'm in junior. A few things to notice, I can turn my sound on. This is helpful for students who are in the process of learning to read and your lower elementary students. Social studies, reading and writing, science. I'm gonna go into science just to show you some of our themes. Once I click into the theme. Habitats. I'm gonna see the lessons that are available. Deserts. And then once I'm in the topic, I'm gonna to see not only my movie, but I'm also gonna see the different resources that come with the movie. I don't have to work sequentially through this. Uh, this is one of the beauties of this platform is that teachers can teach the same lesson, but they can do it so many different ways because it will depend on what you want to assign students or what you want students to explore. Once you're in uh, and you're playing the video for your students or having them, or you're assigning it to them, know that there's closed captions right here. I taught English language learners, so I love closed captions. I think especially students um, who are learning to read, it's great for them to see the words as the characters are speaking, but also know that there's a settings button. So I can slow it down without distorting the speech. If it's a sensitive topic and you wanna preview it, check out the transcript here, and then you have your full screen button. Once you've viewed the video, you have any number of resources here. If I know that I'm gonna assign deserts to my first graders, I'm just gonna go scroll below the movie and click assign. There's two ways to assign work. This is going to be very important for you to remember. You're either gonna scroll below the actual topic that you want students to study and click assign. And you see I've clicked in there and it's showing me everything that I can assign. So the movie's already been added. Maybe I want students to take the easy quiz and then I want my um, first graders to draw about it. Click next. Please turn in by Friday. Maybe you're doing your assignments on Monday, they have some choices and they turn it in by Friday. I click next. I can put in an optional due date, which is fine. I'll put, uh, let's say it's tomorrow the 10th. Select your class. So your class is going to be rostered in because you're using Clever. I can also pre-plan, so I can schedule these for later. Click assign and it's already been assigned. So my assignments take about 20 to 30 seconds to push out. Maybe I'm posting on Google. I'm gonna copy the assignment link. I'm gonna go over to my Google and drop that link. Okay, so know that you have some quick options to get you going. The second way that you can assign work is to go up to the top to your dashboard and click new assignment. Okay, so two places, right at the topic page or go to the top dashboard and click through, find your class and hit new assignment. Okay, pretty easy to navigate. I'm gonna jump into Brain Pop. Let's go to science. Once you're in Brain Pop, if you teach grades three and up or you have lower grade students that wanna use Brain Pop, you're gonna see that there's two ways to access the topics. I can look first at the units, and then I can go to topics, which is gonna to go to the granular detail level. And you can see here, <clears throat> there's a lot to choose. Let's go to one of our newer topics. So I'm gonna to go to the search bar for this one. So if you can't find something that you're teaching, just go to the search bar. Okay, if you haven't seen this video, this is the one I mentioned that was released about maybe six to eight weeks ago. <sighs> Ah, 
Ah, ah, nothing like an early morning jog. To <coughs> Phew. What? Oh, stop it. <laughs> Dear Tim and Moby, I've been hearing lots of scary stuff in the news about the coronavirus. Can you tell me more about it, please? Thanks, Khalil. Sure thing, Khalil. Viruses are tiny particles that can invade living cells. There are millions of varieties with different behaviors, shapes, and structures. Coronaviruses are one group named for their crown-shaped outline. Four of these commonly infect humans. A lot of times when you get a cold, it's caused by a coronavirus. Any virus has one goal, to replicate or make more copies of itself. But it can't do that on its own, so it invades an organism and turns its cells into virus factories. <laughs> this can be unpleasant for the host, the organism that the virus has infected. The new coronavirus typically causes coughing and fever. A healthy body can usually fight off this illness, known as COVID-19, on its own. Symptoms are mild for most people, especially kids. But in a body with weakened defenses, COVID-19 can become more severe and require medical treatment. Some people get seriously ill, and that's gotten everyone's attention. This new coronavirus was first identified in Wuhan, China. In late 2019, there was an outbreak. That's when a disease starts spreading. More and more people got sick, first in China and then around the world. Entire cities have been quarantined or closed off to slow the disease's spread. Fortunately, viruses can't get around without our help. And there's a lot we can do to not help them. Like washing your hands, especially after you use the bathroom and before you eat. That's always a good idea, and you probably already do it. Scrub with soap for at least 20 seconds to make sure you don't miss any spots. Whenever you cough or sneeze, cover your nose and mouth to help keep any germs contained. <coughs> and if you're sick, avoid other people. You wouldn't want to infect them, even if it's a plain old cold. Well, when there's an outbreak where you live, experts recommend some added precautions like social distancing, limiting close contact with other people, even if you're not sick. Hang out at home with your family and keep up with your friends online. That gives the virus fewer opportunities to spread around. Lots of outbreaks have been stopped when enough folks just follow these simple rules. Yeah, it's true. Some people have died after being infected by the 2019 coronavirus. That's because the virus can infect a person's lungs and make it hard to breathe. Those are the stories we hear about most online and in the news. But the vast majority of cases have been mild. If you feel overwhelmed by the news, consider limiting how much you let in. Instead of cable news and social media, stick to sources like the World Health Organization. They'll give you the big picture, not just the scary snapshots that make the headlines. And they're organizing experts all over the world to get this coronavirus under control. Still, it's totally normal if the situation's made you a little anxious. Talk to a trusted adult. They can help you put your feelings in perspective. One last thing. Coronavirus doesn't care where you're from or what your background is. So don't let anyone turn this into an excuse to target someone based on how they look. Working together is how we'll beat this thing. So let's stand up for our neighbors. Okay, I'm a sweaty mess. I gotta rinse off. Oh, don't be so dramatic. Where are you going? I really think you're overreacting. Okay, so uh, Brain Pop always has some humor and usually Subjects are discussed and explained between Tim and Moby, but as you've seen um, with some of the other images, we have a host of other brain pop characters. So you're aware the quiz is a 10 question, multiple choice quiz. I can assign that to my students and I can assign an easy version or a hard version. But one thing that's really cool about this quiz feature is I can create my own quiz. 
And I want to make sure that you're aware of this because many of the tools in BrainPop are actually agnostic and they can be used for, with your lesson. So even if I'm teaching about the coronavirus using something online and then brain pop, I can create my own questions. I can change the format so it's open-ended or maybe I'm doing a poll. I can even upload images, especially for my ELLs, something too mu with too much text didn't work for me. So I might um, customize this quiz to make sure that it works for my students. Once I'm ready to finalize it, then I can finalize it and push it out to uh, the kids in my class. The other thing that you can do on topics that have been on BrainPop for a while is you can look at the community's quiz. Uh, sometimes teachers will share their quizzes. So once you go in to create your own quiz, you might see some other teachers in the world who have shared their quiz, and then you can actually quickly pull together uh, questions from other sources to make your own quiz okay so that's all customizable and flexible let's go in another direction let's go to math and take a look at some topics I'm going to show you make a map and then I'm going to pause and I'm going to have you actually log in and search for something that you're wanting to teach over the next week and have you also play in make a map so I'm gonna go to how about we just do division and imagine that we've watched the video together which is about three minutes long and I'm going to assign make a map now before I do that I'm just gonna scroll down and see what what else is on this page I have lesson ideas I have my standards alignment tool so I can take a look at exactly what standards I'm reaching with this lesson and then remember I have that assign tool so I can send this to my students here are related topics that I might also add sometime this week if we're in this um, unit so let's take a look at make a map these are creativity tools for students to show what they know I'm going to go ahead and use one of the brain pop templates and I'm going to give my map a title I like to use a question because then at the very top of my map is the essential question and it keeps students rooted to what the point of the assignment is. So uh, what is division? Share an example. So you're going to see right here at the top now is my question and I have all these templates. So if I'm teaching humanities or um, a, a subject that might be better with a spider map, I can click here. I'm doing problem solution analysis, so I'll use that one for math. But choose the template that makes the most sense for the topic and the lesson. You don't even have to use a template. If you don't want to use a template, you can just use these blank notes. And that's when students just can pull in a bunch of different notes and then they can start to construct their map everything is designed to be accessible here on the left side so i can replay the movie i have images here that are related if i don't see an image then i can search for it so i'm not limited just to those images kids often want moby to be inside their map go back into division and from here, I can just start dropping some of the images that match. And then here I could put an explanation of this. I can draw and show relationships across different symbols, definitions. Uh, the other thing I'm going to find are keywords. And I can start dry, dropping these in. What I like about the keywords is that if I have forgotten what division is, I can click on the play button. It'll go directly to that point in the movie. Division is basically the splitting of large numbers into equal groups of smaller numbers. In our case, we're trying to divide our loot in between the four of us so that we have an equal share. Okay. So well, in 
it's divide it's uh given me my explanation so i'm going to draw a line here and so on and so forth so you begin to build your concept map with the information that you learned if you're teaching division and you're using uh your core math textbook and you're using brain pop you can still use all the brain pop tools you're not limited to just brain pop content so i can show my teacher what i've understood about the division lesson he's been teaching me all week in this concept map and then i click over here and i can submit it or assign it as a teacher you can model this as i'm doing and then click assign and so your students can finish a map that you started together as a, as a class and that's just great for modeling one other thing i'll show you is this little camera icon it's called snap thought you're going to see it periodically in brain pop what's great about this is it allows you to capture a screenshot of what you're seeing so if i'm looking at these images of division and i don't see what i want i can play the movie click the camera icon and capture an image that i want in my map or my movie in division all these numbers have special terms Okay, so you see I captured it right here. And then there's a little area where I can write 20 divided by 4 equals 5 because there are four groups of five. So I can start to write an explanation. You'll also see snap thought in gaming. And what's really fun about that is kids can snap thought three steps along their gaming to explain why they're choosing to go down a certain path or why they're hypothesizing that using this resource to get this is the right path to follow to win the game. It's a great reflection tool, but it also very much illustrates students thinking. And, and so use this as you can throughout your lessons and become familiar with it. Let's pause here and let's have you log in find a topic that you're interested in or that you're teaching and then click on make a map and just take a few minutes to start moving keywords in look at the templates and ask questions in the chat box why don't we take about four or five minutes just to get started with make a map Yvette, I'll hop in and help you out in the chat room too. Okay. And we've got some, we've got a few open questions in the q and I've been working on those. At this point, all of you should be in Make a Map and just start familiarizing yourself with the tools on the left side. You, you won't be finishing a map, but we just want you to be familiar enough that you can start 
feeling comfortable assigning and then modeling. If you forget some of what we've taught today, there is even a movie on concept maps. So you can always go to the search bar, type in concept maps, and there's a beautiful, I think it's three to four minute uh, movie that really outlines how advanced mapping can become for students and really helps outline how it can be used. So whether it's writing, whether it's doing a collaborative project, uh, make a map is really great for showing, um, giving students a way to organize their thinking that is not necessarily uh, only one way. So lots of students can do it many different ways. So you've had some people are having some issues getting uh, logged in. So everybody should be logging in through Clever. Correct. So you go through uh, clever.com slash in slash O-U-S-D. You normally would end and you would click on the brain pop icon. And that should get you right into your account. So we're gonna take maybe one more minute and then we'll jump into make a movie. If you are uh, struggling with logging in, don't mm -hmm. worry, we'll help you and we'll, we'll, we can always stay on the call with you and make sure you're logged in so that you can explore. I will just let you know that, you know, brain, one of the really beautiful things about brain pop is that it is a very intuitive system. So it doesn't require intense levels of PD that you may have experienced with other um, curricula. Brain pop is easy to navigate for students. It's easy to understand for teachers. And there's so much that's available that uh, even if you are struggling on the login, once you get in, you're gonna find that it's really easy to find the resources and then to create projects on brain pop. Okay, why don't we jump into make a movie? Robert, is that something that you wanna do or do you want me to carry on? Actually, why don't you carry on? I'll see if I can get my, um, those overview slides up since some people aren't um, able to get on. Maybe we could wrap up with that then too at the end. Okay, that sounds I just good. Want to, I just wanna do a time check. Um, it's 11.41 and um, just wanna leave enough time to um, answer any additional questions. Okay, sounds good. So let's move, we're gonna do make a movie and then I'll briefly show you coding. Make a movie is one of my personal favorite uh, tools. It's really fun and kids absolutely love making their own movies. And now they can make their own movies just like Tim and Moby and show you what they understand about any topic that's in Brain Pop. Uh, it's not currently on Brain Pop Junior, but we have lots of junior kids who are jumping over to Brain Pop and creating movies, so don't let that limit your exploration. I'm going into SEL. We also have digital citizenship. Obviously, digital citizenship has, has a lot of renewed interest in the last month, so those are two content areas that I uh, encourage you to explore. Let's take a look at some of the topics in SEL. This is our most recent content area that was released over the summer been getting a lot of positive praise. And I'm not gonna play the whole movie because you've had an opportunity to see a few different Brain Pop movies today. But I'm gonna go to one that's uh, really been getting a lot of attention in the schools and that's one on depression. Uh, let's go right into make a movie. And I'll give you a, a demo on how simple this is and how fun it can be for kids. Now, when you're making a movie, you as the teacher could create an essential question that you want your class to solve, or you could have students construct their own question about something they're curious about solving, and we also will give you some samples. So again, all these tools are designed to be flexible. Uh, I'll grab this one. How does depression affect everyday life? And that's gonna be the start, just like the movie you saw, uh, we're going to start the first slide with this question. I'm going to add a yellow background, and then I'm going to go to slide two. And I think I'm just going to start by adding my backgrounds, and I'm going to keep this movie short. I'm going to do a five-slide movie. 
And then I'm gonna start building my scenes. So I've got my first one ready to go. I'll add sound later. And now I'm gonna to go to my second slide and I'm gonna just like in the map, I'm gonna drag and drop images. And then alongside those images, I'm gonna bring in some annotation. Now for my younger students, they might just be working with images in the concept maps or the movies. Um, students who are starting to decode and uh, maybe putting in some words or partial words as they're learning to write. And I can start to construct what I want to say about this topic. Let me back up a little bit. I can add as many images as I want. Some are moving images. So just be aware that some of these are video graphics. And then I might add a little bit more annotation. Maybe I'm gonna have a speech bubble. When I put the speech bubble in, I'm still gonna need to drag in a text box to be able to write inside that speech bubble. Sometimes you'll see someone trying to write in there. And so on and so forth. So I start to go to my next slide, continue to build my scenes, annotate. And then once I've strung together a number of slides, I'm ready to add sound. When I add sound, it's actually quite simple. I'm just gonna click here. And I have two options for adding sound. I can either use a computer generated voice. I can change the question if I've chosen a personal question or the teacher is using a very specific question. I like the recording because when I was teaching my ELLs, uh, they can really hear their advancements from month to month. And especially when students are with you for the course of a semester or a year, they can hear how their oral proficiency is dramatically improving. So let's try it. Dear Yvette and Moby, how does depression affect everyday life? From a friend. It's been a process, I can replay it. If I feel comfortable with it, I'm gonna add it to my movie. Otherwise, I can re-record. Dear Yvette and Moby, how does depression affect everyday life? From a friend. I'm gonna click save. And there is auto saving happening with my map in my movie. Then I'm gonna to go to the next slide and I'm gonna add sound. Once I'm done and I've added all my sounds, my images and my text box, I can preview and see my movie. Dear Yvette and Moby, how does depression affect everyday life? From a friend. Okay, so it's gonna roll through the string of slides. And I'll give you an example of a movie that was recently created. Now, um, interestingly enough, this was created before schools closed. So you're gonna see already that the statistics are quite different. And you'll also see that at the time, this student was going to the internet and finding additional information about the topic. See if I can open it up. This is a 12 year old movie. Dear Tim and Moby, I have been hearing a lot about coronavirus. Can you tell me more about it and why there has been such panic? From Kobe. Coronavirus is a virus similar to a mild flu and has most of the same symptoms, like a fever, Let runny me nose, pause coughing, this. I have and two playing. Most of the people who get coronavirus usually already have a Dear sickness and or aren't as healthy. <laughs> sorry. For example, elderly people, babies, and pregnant women all are more at risk than healthy people. Here we go. Obi, I have been hearing a lot about coronavirus. Can you tell me more about it and why there has been such panic? From Kobe. Coronavirus is a virus similar to a mild flu and has most of the same symptoms 
like a fever, runny nose, coughing, and many more. Most of the people who get coronavirus usually already have a sickness and or aren't as healthy. For example, elderly people, babies, and pregnant women all are more at risk than healthy people. So remember to always wash your hands frequently, and if you're sick, try to avoid getting others sick too. A flu is actually many times worse than coronavirus. In the last four months, 18,000 to 46,000 people have died from the flu, while only 3,000 people have died from coronavirus. It's easy to get anxious when you hear scary things on the news, but you really don't have to worry as long as you stay calm and keep it in perspective. Okay, so that's just an example of what uh, a student can create with Brain Pop using the movies. Robert, is there anything you would add to the movie feature? People are asking if you know all the images are already there. You're right. You, so you have access to Brain Pop's um, asset library. So anything that your students would want to include, um, they can uh, search for it, um, uh, whatever the topic is. There'll be uh, things that are related to that. They can make backgrounds. Kids get very, um, very artistic in here with backgrounds and, and foregrounds and middle grounds, uh, voices. So it's a great way, especially for reluctant writers, you know, or maybe your L students. Uh, this, like Yvette said, is a, is a great tool for them to be using. So, and, uh, uh, go ahead. A lot of people are asking too, just, they just they're getting caught up, but um, I'm, I'm putting in the, uh, chat room and the Q&A, some links to all the resource pages and also maybe um, Yvette, I can show um, Brain Pub Educators as well at the end. Okay, yeah. So why did I just take a two minutes then since we're getting close and just show you the, uh, the collection on digital citizenship. This is an important one, especially because we're gonna have our students um, online a lot during this, during these school closures. So I'll jump into online safety, and I'm just going to point your attention to a few things. Um, one is gaming. There are close to 150 learning games on BrainPop. You can always just put games in, and you can see that there's games for all these different content areas. Once you click in, it'll even give you an option for do you want a long game, do you want grades 3 to 5, K3. So you can start to filter down to your specific need and choose some games that you think would work. Kids love gaming on BrainPop. The other thing I wanted to show you is that we have coding. And coding is uh, really, it's tied to every topic. There are three to 10 coding projects. So you literally have thousands of coding opportunities. And these are designed for teachers who don't know how to code. So don't feel like you need to be a coding expert and actually teach coding. BrainPop takes that on for you. Um, we have Scratch, which many of you may be familiar with, and we have VidCode. VidCode is a step above Scratch because it's text-based, it's JavaScript coding. So once your students uh, are pretty fluent with Scratch, then have them start working in VidCode. Okay, so Robert, do you wanna show them educators page? You're on mute, Robert. So let me see, am I able to uh, share you back? Yeah, you're good now, yeah. All right. I'll stop sharing. Okay. So share screen. Da, 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 da. Okay, a couple of resources um, that I'm going to uh, share here. Uh, this is our uh, current, this is not Brain Pop Educators, this is our current site right now for, uh, for all of the resources that uh, we have out you know many teachers you know having to do distance learning right now so we have lots of ways that they can go in uh, many of you who are not able to uh, log in maybe you can uh, work through those on, at your site but then we also have quite a bit of information that we are rolling out at least once a week with um, webinars so we'll be doing some of these um, within house at our house uh, but that's all this i'll make sure to share this uh, link right here um, but then also you can go to when you're on brain pop if you're logged in, um, you'll see a little Mobi icon over here and Brain Pop Educators is there. Uh, if you're logged out, this kind of gets you in there. If you absolutely can't get in, you know, there's free access, but you bet everybody should be able to get in through there, mm -hmm. through the district there. Okay. Yeah. 
So I, I'm going to show you the easy way to get to educators is, uh, if you're not logged in, is just to go to educators.brainpop.com. And that will bring you to my department here. So everything that uh, Yvette was sharing is uh, going to give you some support materials down here for tools and features. Some of you were asking for tutorial videos, step-by-step uh, -step guides, that's all right here. So I'm gonna click and open up that. You'll see it's uh, uh, compartmentalized into like uh, discover and play and create, uh, both BrainPop and BrainPop Junior tools. Uh, Yvette did say it, I know some people are asking about it, but like the make a movie is not on BrainPop Junior yet, but you just go to a related topic on BrainPop. If you're studying plants in second grade, you go to plants and, and maybe in brain pop and they can make the movie there. But you'll see within here, um, there's all the uh, resources, like here's make a, uh, make a map. You'll see that we have like a one minute overview. If you still didn't get it, we got a three minute overview, you know, step-by-step -step guides. Uh, people are asking about accessibility and L materials. We have uh, all that in here, how you can use all these tools and features to support uh, those different types of learners. So this is just all one, just one, you know, on make a map, you're going to have all these feature uh, support resources for every, everything that's on BrainPop and BrainPop Junior. Again, to get to that is going to go to the educator site at educators.brainpop.com. And um, it'll be down here at tool and feature support. Uh, normally, uh, this link next to it, next door is, um, you know, is really becoming a pretty robust now with a school and home connection. Uh, you can click there and that's going to bring you here. Many teachers are having to like, it's like, ah, I need some lessons. You know, we're cranking out uh, a bunch of lessons that are kind of tied to global um, standards that are kind of hitting here in the springtime, but also just model lessons. So I recommend maybe even going in here, picking your, we're even making them grade specific uh, for not only um, those that are online, uh, but maybe students who are um, offline or picking up packets. Uh, we've got ideas for synchronous and asynchronous lessons. So lots of um, resources that you'll find here. Okay, so that's, I think uh, in our present um, time, uh, these two links right here on BrainPop Educators, the tool and feature support and a school and to home connection are going to be um, your best resources uh, for these times here. So um, just we've just got a few minutes left of our scheduled um, webinar, uh, Yvette and Robert. So I just want to propose that maybe we can just um, we can actually go a little bit further, but uh, maybe we can uh, after, past our scheduled time. But maybe we can just answer a couple of um, questions that I'm seeing uh, come up over and over again. Um, one of them is um, so Spanish, uh, the Spanish version. So um, I understand that there's no single sign-on um, icon in Clever that's available to get there directly, but could you just tell us about how, how teachers can access, access the uh, Spanish version of BrainPop? Sure. So right now uh, for BrainPop Español, you go directly to BrainPop Español and log in, and we can provide a generic username and login. And then that could be shared with any families. It will require an actual typed in username, but then um, students or families can save that password. Uh, it doesn't have the single sign on capabilities through Clever, but the content is native proficiency. It's made from the Mexico City office. Everything you see on BrainPop is available in BrainPop Español, and some of our teachers just have students create projects on the English side, but they use um, Spanish vocabulary and, and words. So they create Spanish make a map and Spanish movies on the English side, if that makes sense. Okay. And then, Those two um, aren't on the Spanish side. Then I do know, it, so it is possible to, to get into BrainPop Español just by, by clicking on that. If you go into any of the regular, uh, the, well, BrainPop, for Brain Pop Junior, you can click on that icon, and there's a drop down menu that Yvette is showing right now, and that right. accesses Espanol also. And yeah. Uh, yeah, if you see it there and you can get in that way, that's definitely the easiest way. If you have any problems, we can give you the generic login details. Okay. Great. Another question the direct that I'm seeing um, come up a lot um, is Is it possible to post a Brain Pop assignment? 
on, um, I know we talked a little bit about Google Classroom, but if, if, if teachers are using something like Seesaw, if they just wanna post a link, does that work? Does that, just to have a link and then post that in a learning management? Robert, I don't know the answer yes. to you, Robert. Right, so when you make, when an assignment is made, there is a URL address, and many teachers will then go and put that like in Google Classroom. But from my experience and from what I'm hearing, it's probably easiest, um, you know, you have the extra step to do that, but then also for the students too. So it, I think they may find that it's eventually easier just to just to keep it all within BrainPop. But yes, you can. There is a URL that's unique to that assignment. Okay. Uh, one quick thing, Kelleth, because I do see this being questioned, and Robert, feel free to chime in. Uh, I know that some people go to the App Store and they try to get Brain Pop through the App Store or on their phone. Robert, um, that's a limited subscription, correct? Right. If, if any of you have those at your schools, like maybe on the tablets or iPads, you can keep them there, but really all those are going to have are the, um, the content movies. They're kind of fun, especially for home. Um, we call them lovely, but limited. They uh, do not have the ability to have individual logins. So what you would do is you just tell your students just to go to the mobile browser, either Chrome or Safari, and uh, they just log right in. They can even log in through their Clever account uh, through that uh, portal as well. Yeah, that's been my experience that you can, that uh, students or, or teachers, they can log in through Clever on, on a mobile device. So it works. Great on a phone, log into Clever and then click on or tap on the Brain Pop icon on the phone. And that works. Right. And, and Brain Pop, at least in my experience, seems to be very phone friendly. Good. Yes, it's it's what you see on the computer is what you're gonna get on on the um, the handhelds. Uh, there might be a few like partner games that are still flash based, but um, you know, Brain Pop's material for the most part is um, mobile friendly. If it doesn't appear on a phone or a tablet, it's probably the screen is not big enough really to like to make a map or a movie, but the content and the activity pages and some of the other resources, yes, definitely it's, it's um, mobile friendly. Okay, great. So we are at 12 o'clock right now. So I just want to, uh, I know that we had it, we're, we're scheduled to end right now. So I want to offer the opportunity for people to check out now if you've got something else that you need to do. Um, Robert and Yvette, if you're willing to uh, stick around just for a few minutes, if we've got any extra questions coming up, sure, uh, we can we can stay here for a few minutes. But just want to thank everybody for participating today. We're going to officially end it here with an optional Q and A session going forward. Thank you.